day of the week at early dawn the women went to the tomb taking spices which they had prepared and when they arrived at the tomb the stone had been rolled away from the tomb while they were perplexed about this suddenly two men stood beside them in dazzling apparel and as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of evil men and be crucified and on the third day rise.
continue with our call to worship. The tomb was sealed, Jesus' fate was sealed. The stone was rolled away. Come and see. Christ is risen. us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ, and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Yeah, you got to turn your mic on. All I want to do is say a word of welcome to worship at Bethany Lutheran Church. We are so pleased to have all of you here joining in for this Easter celebration here in the sanctuary together on the live stream. It is a joyful day, and so you make it more joyful with your presence. Thanks for being here. Just by way of introduction, my name is Nate Preisinger. I serve as one of the pastors here at Bethany. It's my privilege to serve alongside Pastor Gary Sandberg, Deacon Deborah Alba, and our Director of Pastoral Care, Janet Mortensen. Please, if you are new to Bethany, feel free to uh, introduce yourself to one of us as you leave this morning or later on during the week. Uh, We just want to be here to support you in your journey of faith. And again, we are so grateful that you can all be a part of the Easter celebration this morning. Our worship service continues now with the reading of Scripture. Please read the Psalm 18 with me responsively. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, 
and has become my salvation. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The lesson for this Easter Sunday is taken out of the book of Acts, chapter 10. Peter crosses the immense religious and social boundary that separates the Jews from the Gentiles in order to proclaim the good news of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection so that God's forgiveness in Jesus' name would reach out to all people. The reading. Peter began to speak to the people I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God had anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem, they put him to death by hanging on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear. Not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he, is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Please rise as you are able for the gospel acclamation. <laughs> Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. 
As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O oh Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> Can't be without an egg at Easter, yeah. <clears throat> So the women went to the tomb. Now we know what they were going to do. They, they had spent the day before putting the spices together, preparing them in order to anoint Jesus' body. This is something that would be fairly common in Jesus' day. So we know what exactly it was the women went to do. But we know that as they headed toward the tomb, Two things were going through their mind. One, how are we going to roll the stone away? I, I'm kind of surprised that hadn't been brought up the day before as they were preparing all the spices, to be honest. But they had a lot on their minds, I'm sure. So we'll give them a pass on that one. But the second thing is, they knew they were going to the tomb to hopefully get the stone array oh, moved away, that they would encounter a dead body that they would put the spices on. That's what they knew. Now, they had probably, maybe somewhere, been thinking, Jesus mentioned something about this. They might have even had this inkling toward Lazarus. I mean, Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days and been raised from the dead, but Lazarus had just been sick. Jesus had been crucified. And crucifixion was final. And so they went to the tomb knowing exactly what they would find until they arrived at the tomb. But in order to understand what it was that they really found there, we're going to need some young people up here to help us out. Deacon Deborah is going to come up. And if you don't have a driver's license yet, come on up and join us right up here. Good morning. Come on up. Come on up. Get and if close. you're in the great hall, just listen in, or unless you want to <laughs> run over here real quick, you can. Come on in, come on in so I can see you really close. Good morning. Hi, friends. How are we? Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy. Thank you. Have any of you looked for any Easter eggs today? Yeah. <laughs> Will some of you do it later on today? Okay, I have some Easter eggs here. I have three Easter eggs. Should we see what are inside them? Yeah. Okay, let's see. Oh, I always like to shake them. Do you hear anything in there? Okay, what do you think it is? Maybe jelly beans? That would be good. <gasps> chocolate, dark Ooh, chocolate. Uh. Ooh, that's good, right? Okay. Let's, ooh. What do you think of this one? Do you think this is something special? <clears throat> Why do you think it's something special? Because it's gold? Okay, let's see. Sometimes looks are deceiving, aren't they? Oh, what do I have? What do I have in here? Stickers. There's a cross and a bunny. Sticker cross. Okay. So was it as exciting as you thought it was going to be in the gold egg? Not so much, was it? Okay, one more. Let's shake this one. Do you hear anything in that? Do you hear anything? No? Okay, let's open it. You ready? Okay. Oh. Hmm. What, what's in here? Nothing. 
Would you be sad or disappointed if you opened an egg and there was nothing inside of it? Yes, most of us would be a little sad. But what if this was the best gift ever? And not the shiny gold egg, but the empty egg. Because this is the best message of Easter. The very best message. Because Easter is all about the empty tomb. Easter is all about the empty tomb. Jesus was killed, he was crucified, he died, and they went to look for him. The ladies went to the tomb, and did they find Jesus? No, No, the tomb was empty. So this egg, this empty egg, is the very best news we could ever hope to receive. Not the shiny, shiny egg, because God works unexpectedly. Now, you're going to help me out through the rest of the sermon. You're here, or if you go back to the Great Hall to sit with your family, I'm going to be asking several times through the sermon, or I'm going to say something like, you get the, and you're going to shout back at me, empty tomb, Mm -hmm. all right? So we're going to practice once. I'm going to be talking, I'm talking, I'm going to say, you know what you get? You get the empty tomb. tomb. Awesome, just like that, so everybody can hear you. That is the gift that we have today. So you can head back to your seats or you're heading back to the Great Hall and be ready to shout that out to me, okay? As they head back, I know parents, you're already thinking, can I get home and get the chocolate out of those eggs, you know, for myself now? No, you still have to leave that in there for them. So as... As we know what the women went to do, we know what they now encountered at the tomb, that it was empty. I also wondered a little bit, what was their actual motivation for going? I mean, I knew the the process that they were planning, but what were they really thinking as they headed to the tomb, or even as they made preparations for it? I imagine that some people would have gone to the tomb purely out of love. And then the incredible love they would have for Jesus would want them to be there, and that's why they would want to go. Probably others just went out of ritual. You know, well, it's just what we do when somebody dies. We go to the tomb, we put spices on. This is the ritual that we've built up as a part of our lives, and so we just go. Some of them might have gone just purely out of obligation. That's what we have to do. It's not something we really enjoy doing. If you gave me an option, I would take it if I could. But I know this is really an obligation that I just have to fulfill at this time. And some people might have even gone out of peer pressure. You know, two of the women might have said, hey, we're going to the tomb right away after the Sabbath. And the third was going, oh, I don't want to go. Oh, come on, you have to go. No, I really don't want to. You have to go with us. And though they give in to peer pressure and they show up at the tomb. Here's the thing, regardless of their motivation as to why they went on that Sunday morning, kids, are you ready? I'm about to ask you. So I want you to be ready to answer me. All right, so here we go. So regardless of their motivation, when they arrived at the tomb, they got the empty tomb, right? It didn't matter why they went, that was the gift they received. And so it started making me wonder a little bit, why are all of you here? Why are you here on this Sunday morning, on this Easter day? I'm guessing that some of you are here out of love. It is the incredible love that you have for Jesus. There is nothing that could have kept you away from being able to be here in a space of worship on this Easter Sunday. Some of you might just be here out of ritual. It's a Sunday morning. I was coming anyway, and it just happened to be Easter. But I would have been here whether it was the seventh Sunday in Pentecost or whether it was Easter Sunday. It doesn't matter. It's a part of my ritual. Some of you might be here out of obligation because you weren't really given a choice. You know that when grandma's in town, we go to church and we all pretend like we go to church every Sunday and everybody knows we don't, but at least we live out the obligation on Easter and we're all okay with that. And some of you might be here just out of peer pressure. I just finally caved to my friends and decided I would be here. Well, here's the news from God for you. I don't think God 
cares what motivated you to be here this morning. No matter why you are here, you get the empty tomb because this is God's gift for the world and that's what God wants you to know. God is just delighted that you are in the presence of the community of God's people to experience the empty tomb and it does not matter what brings us here. What matters is what God does once we're here. This encounter that we're able to have and I'm sure for some of you, you've maybe experienced nine years Easter's or five Easter's and some of you have probably experienced 95 Easter's and you're still here today because there's something still about this story that compels us to encounter it in a new way. It's, it's like that surprise when you've been invited to a party a month ago and so you RSVP, oh sure I'll be there because it sounded like a good deal, the idea at the time and then that day comes and you look and you go, oh, you look at the calendar, we got this party, we have to go. And then you're like thinking, can I get out of it? No, you really can't because you told him a month ago you're going to be there. And so you go. And it doesn't matter the motivation for why you're there, you just show up. And then when you're there, you run into an old friend, somebody you haven't seen in a while. And all of a sudden, everything about that day becomes a little more joyful. Or you've been thinking you've served the same thing at your final four party for like the last four years. And you're just looking for any new recipe that you can put in front of friends. And you find one there and the person who made it gives you the recipe. And it's just so delightful to see what you encountered that can be Easter for you. Whatever it is that brings you here, know how delighted the people of God are to be together and know that that encounter can bring something special to your life. Because no matter what it is that brings you to worship on an Easter morning, you get the empty tomb. Because this gift is going nowhere. It is going to be here. It's been here for 2,000 years, and it's going to be here for another 2,000 years. And you get to encounter it anytime you put yourself in the presence of God. Now, we could say that now I know why you're here. We could say it doesn't matter why you're here. But actually, I know why you're here. Some of you are here because you know the music is going to be great. And some of you are here saying, why doesn't the chancel choir sing more K-Love songs? But they don't. That's not what they do. That's what Sounds of Praise did on last night. And you're here, some of you saying, well, I came in and I expected to be bored and I'm still bored. If that's the case, I'm sorry, the choir will sing soon and we'll take care of all of it. Some of you are here just counting the minutes thinking, please let this be a traditional Lutheran worship service that only lasts an hour. And then you'll know that it can be over. There can be all kinds of things going through your mind in the midst of an Easter worship service, but it really doesn't matter what's going through your mind because no matter what you're thinking, you still get the empty tomb because that's what God has for you to encounter but I know this you would not have this encounter if it wasn't for the fact that sometime somewhere somebody testified to the empty tomb as Peter came and talked to the people as Anel read for us in that book of Acts Peter talks about the fact that they were witnesses which means they told people about it they testified to the fact that the tomb was empty because when the tomb was empty it let us know that it wasn't simply that Jesus wasn't there but the fact that all of the love that God could pack in to Jesus Christ, all of the grace that God could pack into Jesus Christ, all of the mercy for the world that God had for us was shoved into that tomb with Jesus on that good Friday, but the tomb could not contain that kind of love, that kind of grace, that kind of mercy on Sunday morning, all of that burst forth for the world. The women might have said, Oh, it looks like we came for nothing when they encountered the empty tomb. But what they soon realized is they came for everything. Everything that God had in store for the world was burst open from that tomb and is upon all of us now. And we're here because somebody chose to testify to the empty tomb. Now, when we read Mark's gospel, we think, well, no, that didn't happen. 
the very end. It said, the women fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seen them, had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone. You ever had something happen to you that was so amazing or so terrifying? And you go to somebody and go, oh my gosh, you should, I can't even tell you what happened. It was so scary. I can't even tell you what happened to me. And what's the first question they ask you? What happened? What's the first thing you do? Tell them. Exactly. That's what happened. Something that can be so terrifying and so amazing that you could never tell anybody about it, you have to tell. And so the women did. The women told and people experienced, and the empty tomb continues to be alive for us today. And 2,000 years from now, people will still gather to celebrate the fact that the tomb was empty. Or will they? Will they? In 2,000 years, continue to gather? There's a chance that they will. You are that chance. The world still needs people who will testify. The world still needs witnesses to the empty tomb. And so that is our call. Our call is to share this incredibly terrifying, amazing story that has been poured out for the world. And you might think, oh, pastor, I can't do that. That's really not in me. This whole idea of testifying, that's not in me. But all I have to say is, Christ is risen. He is ri- Look at all you testifiers. That's just that easy. It's just that easy to proclaim that Christ is wi- risen. The empty tomb is a gift for the world. Go share it. Amen. We join in singing together our hymn of the day. You'll find it on page four in your worship bulletin. I invite you to stand.
worship continues on the top of page five as we share together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church. Where the church is persecuted, protect it. Where the church is privileged, grant it humility. Where the church is fractured, heal it. Guide us all to embody Christ's love in the world. Merciful God, we pray for all peoples and nations, free oppressed communities from occupation, exploitation, and abuse. Teach leaders your way of justice. Empower peacemakers and all who work to end violence and strife. Loving God, we pray for Bethany Lutheran Church and for your spirit in our midst. Feed us at your Easter table and fill us with your wisdom that we may serve and care for others. We offer prayers of healing for Deb, David, Dan, Terry, and Pauline. And we pray for comfort and the hope of the resurrection for the family and friends of Stan Wilson and Hilda Seelan, sister of Margot Klufel. Renew our trust in your promises that we live with joyful courage and compassion. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please take a moment to share a sign of peace with those around you. You'll notice the next heading in your bulletin says Abundantly Bethany. On a typical Sunday morning, I would get up here at this time and let you know about the abundance of ministry opportunities coming up in the days and weeks ahead at Bethany. Uh, but as Pastor Gary said in the sermon, we're just glad that you're here this morning. And so I don't want to peer pressure you into any sort of additional involvement in Bethany but I do want to invite you to further become a part of our congregation in different ways. On the last pages of your bulletin are just some information about some of the ministries that we have here at Bethany. Information about our daily devotional emails that members of the staff write and send each morning. Our, Tuesday, our podcast that comes out every Tuesday morning. And then on the back cover, information about our typical worship schedule on Sundays educational opportunities for all ages on Wednesday nights, and then the ways that we're committed to responding to the needs of the world through action and generosity. So all that's there for you. Feel free to familiarize yourself with it. But again, we are just so grateful uh, that you are here this morning and a part of worship. Welcome. We're so glad to have you with us. And we continue now with this time in worship of offering. Uh, all the ways that you can give appear in your bulletin and are on the illustrator right now. Just to know, if you have a paper offering, you can leave that in one of the silver trays that will be at all of the exits as you exit the worship space this morning. And we do this right in the middle of worship each week with offering because we believe that our life of generosity and our life of faith are intimately connected. 
And so the other invitation I have for you here this morning is uh, to feel free to take out your cell phones and make a gift during this time of offering to Bethany or any God-pleasing ministry you support. We want to encourage generosity in all ways in all places. And so please take time as our choir shares with us a musical anthem to worship God through a giving of a gift to any organization that's meaningful to you. And yes, as we continue on with our time of offering, our chancel choir shares with us the gift of music. Thank you. 
We gather together now for the ancient Christian practice of Holy Communion. Please know that everyone who's gathered here for worship this morning, here in the sanctuary, together with us on the live stream in the Great Hall, all of you are invited to participate in communion today at Bethany Lutheran Church. We believe that this is not only our invitation to you, but more importantly, this is an invitation from Jesus Christ himself. If you will be spiritually nourished by this meal, please come and be fed at Christ's table this morning. Our entire communion liturgy appears in your bulletin at the bottom of page six. I invite you to stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. It is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Christ took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you, it is shed for all people, for the forgiveness of your sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As we remember then Christ's death and resurrection, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Printed in your bulletin at the bottom of page 7 are instructions about communion distribution this morning. Please familiarize yourself with that so you know how the flow works. Just a word, at the front of each seating section, there will be silver trays. Those silver trays contain prepackaged communion kits. Some of them are clearly marked gluten-free. Uh, all of them are alcohol-free. So if that meets your dietary restrictions, feel free to grab one from the silver trays or if you're just more comfortable with the prepackaged communion kit. 
Either way, still do come forward to a communion server to hear those important words, the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. And now, friends, hear this invitation to the table. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready.
Our worship service continues at the top of page 9 in your bulletin. I invite you to stand. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. And now may the love of God fill up your hearts, may the joy of Christ fill up your souls, and may the Spirit of God send you forth in blessing, but not for you alone, but that you might be a blessing to others because you are blessed. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. We join in singing our hymn, Now All the Vault of Heaven Resounds.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thank you.